Welcome to the Wild Enthusiasm for Living podcast. I am your host, Dr. Melissa Mann. Join me for conversations about possibilities and tools for having more joy, more play, and way more of you. What would it be like to wake up every day with a wild enthusiasm for living? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wild Enthusiasm for Living. I'm your host, Dr. Melissa Mann, and today I wanted to talk to you about business. And I was looking back through the podcast I've already recorded, and I was like, man, business is one of my favorite things to talk about, and I really haven't touched on it yet. And I'm aware that every episode has been something kind of totally different, and yet it all comes back to the wild enthusiasm for living. And it's so funny because in this reality, we're like supposed to make everything very cohesive. And in business, it's as though you're supposed to sort of have like one niche thing. And I remember when I first started out life coaching, there was so much push to have like your one like ideal avatar client and all of this stuff that you'll be told in this reality business of what business is supposed to look like, how you're supposed to make the sale, all sorts of things like that. And I always found it to be extremely limiting because it was like, I had a lot of different people that I catered to. I had all sorts of people that took classes with me or that were different clients in different capacities. And each one of them was a gift and I enjoyed all of them. And so it was like, anytime I was told that I had to like make my business more tailored to one specific person, it always felt like it was a limitation and a a diminishment of what I could be. And there was all sorts of things like that with business. When I first started out trying to have any kind of a business, I was really convinced that I was never going to be successful, that business was never going to work for me, and that everything that sort of all the experts had to say about business was great. And I tried to do all of it, but it always had this heaviness to it. And I could never quite place what that was. And when I found the access consciousness business tools, which is within the realm of what we call joy of business, which is a subset of access consciousness tools as they apply specifically to business. When I found those tools, I finally got why nothing else had worked. Because what's true for you will always make you feel lighter. And what's not true for you will feel heavy. And so I would try to do these things and they always created this heaviness in my world, but none of them were congruent with who I was or what I really wanted to create in the world. And once I found these tools, I was able to start making choices with business based on light and heavy, not based on what some other person told me or what was supposed to work. And I kept trying to do those things, but nothing ever worked. So when I found the Joy of Business tools, I was like, wow, this is so different because it's really about kind of living in this yes, no universe of will this work? Yes or no? Yes, no. And choose whichever one feels lighter. And if it's light, yes, then move in that direction. And you play with it and being in the question with business. And I finally got that you start to ask your business questions, that your business is not sort of this extension of you, but it's also an entity unto itself. And you can ask your business questions. And I know maybe that sounds kind of crazy, but it, it you get an energy from your business and your business, like you can ask your business, like, what is the energy of you. Like, show me what you would like to be in the world. What would you like to create in the world? And you can ask your business questions of like, hey, when would you like to have this class? Or where would this class like to be? You can even ask the class. And I'm just using classes as an example. I happen to teach a lot of classes. So I would ask a class, where would you like to be? When would you like to be? 
Um, how much fun can we have? And what would be fun for you to invite people to you? If you have a product, you can talk to your product like that. If you have a book or any other sort of creation, you can have those conversations with those things. And it's not as though you'll like hear a voice talking back to you, although some people do. It's more likely that you'll get an energy of, oh, that's light or that's heavy, or you get an awareness of like, oh, this would like to be on a lake, or this would like to be near this person because they've asked to host me or whatever it is, and kind of allow whatever shows up to show up. And this is where you start to trust you and this allowance for you and what shows up in your business. One of the greatest things I found in business is really getting this energy of like, what if you could never fail? What if every choice that you make gives you more awareness and you keep going? I've talked to so many people who are so afraid of having a business because they're afraid of failing in business and their goal or target is to succeed in business. And this is a conversation I've had a lot of with a lot of people is like, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to have failed? What does it mean to have succeeded? What if you could never fail and every choice you make just leads you more in the direction of what you'd like to create in the world. And if something doesn't work, you just choose again and you choose again. And one of the things that I'm really starting to get about business is that it's not a sprint. It's so much more of a marathon of one thing at a time and you keep going and you keep going. And it often is this energy of never give up, never give in, never quit, keep going. And even if it feels like there's a lull or there's like a slow part or point in time where things seem like they're not creating, it's like when you're willing to pull down all your walls and barriers and just be with it, that's when the magic starts to really show up because you don't go into the wrongness of you. What so many people do in business is they'll start a business or they'll think about starting a business and they won't even really take step one. And then they'll go into all the reasons why they can't, all the reasons why they're wrong and why it will never work for them. And of course, your point of view creates your reality. So if you have the point of view that you're not going to be able to succeed in business, then that is what will show up. But if you have the point of view of, all right, let's see what this creates. Cool. Let's see what this creates. And it's from a space of curiosity and question and not from a space of making yourself right or wrong. All businesses can succeed, but you have to come at it from that. But it's like, as soon as you go into the wrongness of you or how it's already failing or how it's not going to work, and then you give up, that's what happens. Your business doesn't fail. You just give up before it succeeded. So what reality would you like to have in business that you haven't allowed yourself to have that if you would allow it would create the business that you'd really like to have? And if you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, I don't have a business. I don't know if I'd ever like to have a business or want to have a business or if that's even appealing to me, acknowledge that you are already in business. You're in the business of living. And we have all these definitions of what business means. And what if a business doesn't mean that you have to have a registered LLC or S Corp or other kind of business in this reality, but what if your life is your business and your business is your life and you get to create a reality however you'd like to. And if you'd like to truly have a, this reality business that has a license and a title and things like that then you start asking questions about what that business would like to be and how much fun could you have creating it if you knew that you couldn't fail and you knew that anything was possible, but most of us won't start. So a lot of stuff in this reality is to come up with a business plan and to write down everything that you need to create in your business and all of these logistical things. And a lot of that stuff for me was always really boring. And so I found that what worked for me was to play with it and to maybe write down ideas and to have um, like more, I don't even want to say brainstorming. It's more of just like a, a web of ideas. And then you start to go with, okay, is this light? 
Yes or no. Is this light? Yes or no. And you start to ask like, okay, what could I do today that would start to actualize the business I'd really like to have? And it could be anything from creating a social media page to making a phone call to doing some research, but ask questions every day of like, if I was going to create a business today, what is the thing that would create the most right now in this 10 seconds? And once you get through that, it's like, okay, cool. I've made the first step. So now what can I create? And now in this 10 seconds, what is required? What action can I take? What a lot of people get stuck in business is they get stuck in all the doing, like they make these big to-do lists and then they get overwhelmed because it seems like there's so much to do. Sometimes it's helpful to have a general idea of what's required, but then in each 10 seconds to ask a question of like, what is required right now? Okay. Now what is required right now? And it's so much easier to move through business and life actually in that way than having this big long to-do list and then you get overwhelmed and so you never do anything. So anywhere you haven't been willing to ask questions about what business could be for you, would you be willing to let it go and have more of you? So much of having a business is this vulnerability of being you. Because when you have a business, a lot of times in some capacity, it is this putting yourself out into the world. And so many of us are so afraid of what that looks like or what that will create because it's like, oh, well, if I put myself out into the world, then people will judge me. What if you were willing to be judged? We've talked about this in other podcast episodes. So when it relates to business, what if you were willing to be judged? What if you were willing to have people think, who does she think she is? And what if you were willing to do it anyways, not because of anybody else, but because of the joy that it creates for you? And what if, whether you start a business or don't start a business or whatever you do with your life, people will find a way to judge you no matter what. So what if you could be in total allowance of the judgment and get to choose your life that you would like to have for you and let people judge you for whatever they're going to judge you for? Remember that people judge you based on their judgments of themselves. So if they're judging you for having a business or for putting yourself out there, it's so often because it's something they're not willing to choose. So they look at you and rather than make themselves wrong, they'd rather look at you and make you wrong. So please acknowledge that and don't ever let other people's judgments stop you from creating a life you'd really like to have. So my question for you is this, what would you really like to create in the world? If you could create anything, what is that for you? What kind of business or idea or creation can you put into the world that would make it the place that you'd really like to be? What can you add that only uniquely you know that would expand the future and create a greater set of possibilities for you and for your life and for the world? And I get that you might hear that and be like, I don't know. There's nothing about me that's unique or different. And most people, at least I know, I certainly thought that for many, many years that there was nothing really different or unique about me. I didn't have any sort of special talent. You know, some people can sing, some people can draw, some people can act. I didn't have any of those things. And so I was always like, well, there's nothing different or creativity, creative, that's the word I'm looking for, about me. And what I found is the more I've played with this stuff, the more I got how untrue that is. And that just because it doesn't look like this glaring thing, it doesn't mean that there's nothing different about you or not something that you uniquely have to offer. It's often the thing that we are so good at or comes so easily to us that we don't think anything of it. So if you're looking at this, you might ask a friend, like what is different about me or what is unique about me or what sort of like special talent do I have that I'm not aware of? And you'll be amazed at what your friends and family tell you and come up with because they're probably things that you're like, oh, everybody can do that. Except that generally not everybody can do that. It just comes so easily to you that you don't acknowledge 
that not everybody can do that. And that's actually a gift that you have. So start to look for those things and ask people that you trust and care about um, and you know care about you. What are your talents, abilities, skills that you don't even notice? Often those are going to be the things that are going to be your biggest money makers and they're going to be the most fun for you because there's so much ease for you. So start there, start playing with that and start asking questions. What can I add to my life today? If I was creating anything as my life, what would I create? If I could have my days look like anything, what would I like my days to look like? If I could have my job be anything, what would I like my job to be? Who, what kinds of people would I like to play with? How much money would I like to make? Would I like to travel? Would I like to be able to work from home? What else would I like to include? And then once you have all of those things, you can start to look at what it would be like to create something that incorporates all of that so that you can have the life, the business, the money that you'd really like to have in a way that is fun for you and works for you. I have no doubt that I will be doing lots more podcasts on business and money. I also facilitate a number of classes on them. I have a business done different class coming up in August of 2022. That is later um, two months from now at the time I'm recording this. And if you're listening way in the future, I am sure that I will have more business and money classes coming up. You could always check that out at drmelissamahan.com. And um, you can also check out the book, um, Getting Out of Debt Joyfully by Simone Millicis or Joy of Business by Simone Millicis, which are also fantastic books about business and money. So I hope this was a contribution to you today. And I look forward to talking with you more about this in the future. Thank you so much for being here. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the show. My target is to empower you to know that you are the source of your life and that you can create anything you desire. You can visit me at drmelissamann.com for information on how to work with me or participate in any of the classes I facilitate around the world. For more information on the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can go to accessconsciousness.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please submit a five-star review in iTunes and subscribe to the Wild Enthusiasm for Living podcast. Remember to always ask for greater and have way more fun than you're supposed to. See you next time.